Good morning, church. So good to gather together, so good to worship. And we are excited today to sing. We're excited to move into the presence of God together. And so just welcome you to find that posture, welcome you to uh, move into that place uh, where everything disappears around us and we fix our eyes on Jesus and sing and express our adoration to him. And so just invite you to just take a moment right now. And so Lord, we just recognize that you are here, you're present. And we ask, we invite you to make your presence known. We praise you, Lord. We adore you. Stop. 
that truth in worship. We pray for our world right now. We pray for our communities. We ask that you would make a way, a way for us to see you, to see your love, to be encountered by you. Thank you, Lord.
As we just proclaim, Lord, that you are good. You're so good. Your love for us is infinite. It never ends. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. If there's any spot in our life where we would doubt your goodness, Lord, bring it to light so that, that we can release it, so that we can get rid of it. We just praise you, Lord. We praise you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So good, so good to worship together, church. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. We're just going to take a few minutes and just invite you to get yourself settled. Go ahead, kids, and get yourselves ready, and we'll meet you back in about five.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. I am so glad to be able to be here with you today and this Sunday. It's so good, and I welcome you here to be a part of our service today here in Joel's Garage as we're recording together. Before I get started, I just want to give a shout out this morning to the ladies from last week who did the Mother's Day service. Jody and Julie and Lee and Tess, thank you so much for your stories and your sharing. That was awesome last week. It was so good for you to do that and to have that encouragement coming through. So thank you. Thank you so much. Pastor Joel has been spending a lot of time over the last few weeks talking to us about how we need to look and find and experience breakthrough in our lives. And he's given us a lot of really good teaching about prayer, about fasting, about forgiveness, about repentance. He's shown us a lot about what God's word says and about what God wants and needs from us to be able to break through in our lives the things that we are struggling with, the things that we are facing. And so today, I just want to continue on with that and to be able to give you another understanding. We're going to look at David today and some of the things that happened in his life, particularly one instance in a battle he had with the Philistines where he had a breakthrough. And we're going to look at how those things, how some of the things we can learn from that will play out in our lives as we deal with the situations that we go through every day. Because we all need breakthrough. We all need to be able to come to the place where we are being able to put behind us some things and being able to step into the other things that God has for us in our lives. So we're going to take some more time to talk about that. But first, let's take a look at our scripture this morning. We're going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 5 and starting in verse 18. 2 Samuel 5, 18 to 20. The, David had been king now for a while and the Philistines, they'd been a pain in David's neck ever since his battle with Goliath. They kept coming back and bothering him and, and attacking him. And David, for almost the entire reign of his life, the entire length of his life, fought the Philistines again and again and again and again. They just kept coming back. Well, this was one of those again times as the Philistines are coming. In verse 18, the Philistines arrived and spread out across the valley of Rephaim. So David asked the Lord, should I go out and fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord replied to David, yes. Go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. So David went to Bel Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. He burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So he named the place Bel Perazim, which means the Lord who bursts through. I love that phrase, the Lord who bursts through. The Lord literally means the Lord of the breakthrough. We serve a God who is the Lord of the breakthrough. He's the one who is able to break through for us in our lives. And no matter what our challenges are, he's able to give to us what we need to make that breakthrough happen and to make it real. So this morning, as we start right off the top, if you're looking for a breakthrough, whatever it is, God is a God of breakthrough. And you need to get that understanding right within you before we start because that is who we serve. We serve this God of the breakthrough. Let me give you a definition too. I want to define for you what I, how I define breakthrough and how I feel this is a definition maybe a little bit different from what you've heard before and what we've talked about before. But let me give you this definition that will help you, I believe, this morning. Breakthrough is to free an individual or group from the barriers or constraints that have restricted their freedom, opportunity, action, in their lives. To, to break through for the barriers and constraints that have restricted their freedom, opportunity, and action in their lives. We serve the God who wants to break through in us and for us, and he wants us to break through the restrictions and the things that are holding us back in our lives along the way. Now, before I go any further, let me just talk about how breakthrough works just a little bit, and then we're going to get to the story with David. There's two different kinds of breakthrough that we experience. If I was to hold a balloon in front of me right now, full of air and standing there, and I was to take a pin and I would go pop like that, the balloon would burst and go down and they'd say, oh, that's a great breakthrough. That's the kind of breakthrough that many of us want. We want to pray and want God to go pop, poof, and there it goes. It's done. We get it, get it over with. There's another kind of breakthrough. It's the breakthrough where water, more like water in a river, who is gumming up against an earthen bank, in a curve, and over time, the water wears away that earthen bank until finally it breaks through. Both of those are breakthrough, both the pop and the wearing down by the water to break through. 
Water just takes time. Sometimes God does do the pop and bang, it's done automatically, quickly, fast, it's over with. And we are able to have this breakthrough in our lives. And I've heard tremendous stories about people who came to the Lord and they've been free from addictions immediately. That God has healed them immediately. Those things do happen. We ever serve a God who can do that. But for many people, the breakthrough was one that takes time. And it's more like the process of the water in the river eroding the bank until finally it breaks through into its new path. And we need to let God work whatever way he's going to work in us to find the breakthrough in our lives. So as we begin this study today, as we begin looking at what the scripture says and what David did and how David overcame the Philistines in this battle, I want you to know that there is a breakthrough for you in this lesson. And you can learn from it. Now, the first thing about a breakthrough, what's the first part about a breakthrough? All all breakthroughs require this. If you don't have this, you will never get a breakthrough. The first one is a need. You have to have something in your life that there is a need, where there's a lack in some way, shape, or form. Now, that can be because you are stuck in something that you want to get out of, or it can be because you believe that God's leading you to something greater that you want to move into. It has to be, it can be either way, but there's a need that you have in your life. It's something that's going on inside of you and you say, oh, I, it can't stay like this. I just, I got to make something happen. It's got to change. There has to be a change come in my life and I need a breakthrough to be able to get to where God wants me to go and what God wants me to be. And so we're faced with that. So right now, if you have a need, you are a candidate for a breakthrough. Isn't that good to know? Because you've got the number one element that's necessary to get a breakthrough in your life. You've got a need. And our God is the God of the breakthrough. So if you have a need and he's the God of the breakthrough, we're on the right track. That's the first thing that was there. And in David's story, the need was the Philistines had come. He said the Philistines had come into the Valley of Rephraim and they were there getting ready to attack David. So all of a sudden, David had this need. God, we have this enemy coming against us. There is something coming against us, an enemy coming against us in such a way that God, I cannot, I need to know that the way you want me to deal with this, I can't do it by myself. I don't want to do it in my own wisdom. I don't want to do it in my own strength. I want you to guide me and to give me what I need to be able to deal with this attack that's coming against me. So he inquired of the Lord because the second thing is to seek. The first one is the need. The second one is to seek. And David went and inquired of the Lord. What Pastor Joel has been teaching about with the prayer and the fasting and the forgiveness and the repentance and all those elements about breakthrough, those are all part of our seeking God and what he has for us. It's moving into and say, God, I, I need to know what you want from me in this process. I need to know how you want to shape me and mold me and, and use me and to make me different in my life so that I can step into this breakthrough that you've got for me in my life. So we come before God. Now, there's something here I need, we need to just clarify, really, too, because sometimes this gets mixed up. Sometimes when we have a need, we feel that we're trying to move God to us. We're trying to get God to move. Let me put it to you this way. If I'm standing here, and the light there represents God, and I am here. Sometimes we think because we are in a need and we need to get a breakthrough in our lives, we're asking, God, I want you to come here and to break through for me so that I can be able to move ahead. All the things that we've been talking about, all the things that Pastor Joel's been preaching about is not meant to, be, is not meant to move God to you, to us. It's meant to move us closer to God. See, breakthrough comes not when God moves, but when we move in obedience to him and then he's able to do what he needs to because we've moved to the place where he can work in us. And all of those things, praying, fasting, repentance, forgiveness, seeking, obedience, all those things that we've talked about, all are about us moving closer to God. And when we are closer to him, then his power is more able to work in us. It's not a matter of whether you're a Christian or not. You can be a Christian over here, and you will be a Christian over here. It's not a statement of whether you are a Christian or not. It's a matter of whether you are walking in obedience to what he has for you and where he wants you to be. Because when we walk in obedience, the scripture is very clear. That's the place where God is able to do his best work in us as we walk in obedience and faith in him. 
So that's the move of God. And that's the seeking of God. As we believe that God wants to lead us and guide us where he wants us to go. And so we continue to seek that out. God, show me what you want me to be. And so David inquired of God and said, God, should I go and I, should I fight, should I fight the Philistines? Will you give me victory? David asked. And God said, yes, I will give you victory. You go. Now, I like what God said there. God said to David, I will give you victory. But look in the next verse. After the victory was won, David went and did what God told him to do, and the victory was won. David exclaimed, the Lord did it. David didn't say, I did it. He said, the Lord did it. And he recognized that what God was doing was breaking through for him in his life and with his army so that the battle could be won. David, God said to David, God, I will give you what you need. When God gave David what he needed, David gave the glory back to God. Say, God, you did this because I know I can't do this on my own. I know I can't do this on my own. You did this. And he named the place the God who bursts forth, the God of the breakthrough. This is how God starts to work in our lives as we obey him and we follow where he wants us to go. We move into this closer place of him, we seek him, and then God starts to do it. But the third part that I've already sort of mentioned is that when God speaks, we must take action. We must obey what he says for us to do. We have to be able to be in that place of obedience before God to be able to do what God wants us to do. And so sometimes we battle with that because we think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not able to do that. I'm not, I, I just can't get there. Philippians chapter four says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, all things. Romans 8, 37 says that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That's a declaration of, where we, of who we are. Whether we're over here wanting God, feeling that God is, is not where we want him to be and we want to pull him closer to us, or whether we've moved right to this place where God and I are feeling really tight together right now, wherever you are, are those truths are still the same. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be over here in a place of feeling weak, but in this place of feeling weak, that's where God can still say, and he comes and tells us that he can give us the victory in our lives because where we are weak, he is strong. I can be over here and say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And I can get that into my soul and into my being when I'm in a place where I'm still hurting. And when we are there, what that does is it actually moves us over to here when we start to acknowledge and believe what God has already said about us. What God has declared who we are and what we are in him. It moves us into this place now where we are functioning closer to the plan that God has for, us, for our lives. And he's moving us and directing us where he wants us to go. And we are able to experience the goodness of God in all of these things. He moves us ahead. The action must be taken. We cannot step away from doing what's right. We cannot experience that God will just do it. He always requires us to come. God's, it's, God's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. God could do anything he wanted to. Absolutely anything he wanted to. Could God have defeated the Philistines without David and his army? Absolutely. God could have gone, poof, bang, Philistine army gone. God, who is the creator of the universe, of all things, all powerful, he could have destroyed the Philistines, completely wiped them out without David ever being involved in it. But that's not how God works. He's chosen to work through his people, which is you and me. So God's chosen to work through you. He's, he wants to work through you. He wants to get involved in your life. He wants to set you free from the things that are are holding you back, that may be keeping you in bondage, that may be keeping you in fear, the things that you worry about, the things that you're stressing about. All those things that are holding you back in your life, you are in that place of struggle. And you can be in that place of struggle for a long time. But that doesn't mean that God's left you. God loves you. He meets you right where you are. Right now, right now, right where you are. Right there in your, your living room or your office or wherever you are this morning, God's right there with you. He's surrounding you with his goodness. He's got his arms open wide and just saying, I love you this morning. I am with you this morning. And I want to help you today. I am here because I love you and I want to help you. And I want to give you joy 
and victory and peace and strength in your life. I have that for you this morning. And God is there for you because he loves you. He loves you. And now he simply wants us to start to believe what he says and to take some action in what he wants us to do. To take the action to know that it's the way that we need to go and what we need to do. I have to tell you a little bit about myself. For 25 years, just over 25 years, I struggled with and was under, I struggled with, with a condemnation. I, I struggled with a sense of worth. I struggled with a sense of God being ever, able, ever being able to use me or even necessarily to, to work anything through me in my life. I struggled with that because of something that had happened a long time ago. And I continued to beat myself up because of that, badly. And I went through a lot of, a lot of stuff with that. But the result in my life had to be, I had to get a breakthrough. Uh, the result was that God gave me the breakthrough. I could have had the breakthrough 25 years ago, or 24 years ago, or 20, 20 years before, this, before I got it. I could have had the breakthrough way sooner, but I didn't. I stayed in that. I, I let that continue to be in my life. I let that bondage continue to be in my life. I let that condemnation continue to be in my life. And the condemnation, I have to tell you, condemnation, self-condemnation, is a strong, strong bondage that can get a hold of you and can destroy you and can hold you back. And I carried that and I worked through that for a long time in my life. But then came the breakthrough. And the breakthrough came when I began to fully understand who I was in Christ. I'd known it up here all the time. I knew it up here. But it took a long time for it to go from here to here. I call it knowing it and you know her. Getting it down into the very depth of me where it became real to know who I am in Christ and to know that Christ paid the price for all of my sin, all of my failings, everything that was wrong and weak with me. Christ paid for it once and for all. And for you this morning, once and for all, you are forgiven by Jesus Christ. Your past, present, and future sins are all paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are free in him. We are free. That means that we have no bondages in our lives, in him. So if you're dealing with a bondage, there's something where the enemy is lying to you right now this morning about where you are at. Lying to you that you don't deserve it. Lying to you that you can't break free from it. Lying to you that you need to stay where you are. Those are lies that are being told to you this morning. And you need to know that God is a God of freedom who will break you free of where you are. And I'm here to tell you, I know it because I've experienced it in my life. That's the goodness and power of God. But it doesn't happen until you believe it and you start to take action in it. Say, yes, Lord, I believe it. I believe that you want me. I believe that I am forgiven. I believe that you have the power to break this in my life. I, have the, I believe you have the power to move me ahead to where you want me to go in my life. Because when we have a need and we seek God and then we believe and take action on it, what happens is, the fourth part of this, we get to the place where there's now a change. A change takes place. David went out and he fought the Philistines. And as he fought the Philistines, God came through and God gave him a breakthrough, a bursting through victory over the Philistines. And there was a huge celebration that David had. And they went through and they destroyed the, the uh, idols of the Philistines. And they just, the army was excited. They came back to Israel. Everybody was home. They were happy. This was a tremendous thing that they did. But that change that took place, it also involved a little bit of a risk along the way because they were going to war. Every change that we take in our lives, every change that we make in our lives is, is part of the action that we take, but it also requires a risk. A risk that we perceive, God doesn't perceive, we do. We go, well, what if I do that and it doesn't work? 
What if I believe God and he doesn't do what he says he's going to do? What if I hang on to what God's doing and, I, and, and it doesn't work out the way that I'm believing God's wanting me to understand it? What if I go through all of these things in my life and don't hang on to it and, and, and fail to hang on to it in the right way and I make a mistake and I fall down and I struggle and I can't get up again. I just keep beating myself up and I beat myself up. I've tried so many times and I fail, I fail, and I fail. There's a story of a monastery down in South, South America up on the side of a hill and it was overlooking the village that was there. Very seldom did the, the monks from the monastery come down into the village but they did about once a month to get some food and things and then they would go back up. One day one of these monks came down the hill and was walking through the village and one of the villagers was so excited to see him and he, he walked up to the monk and said, Sir, sir, let me ask you a question. What do you do up in the monastery? The monk looked at him and said, well, we fall down and we get up. We fall down and we get up. And then we fall down again and we get up again. Sounds simple, doesn't it? When we fall down, get up. Yet so many times in our walk with God, as we're going through this process of, of believing and, and taking action and the process of change, if we fall down in that process, we just lay there and say, what, it didn't work, well, help me, what am I going to do? Get up. Get up. Whenever you find yourself in a place where you've been knocked down, wherever you are in this whole process, wherever that is, if you get knocked down, get up. Because when you get up, you're saying, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. I, I, am, I, am, I am loved by God. I am cared by God. I'm a child of God. I'm a part of his family. He belongs to me and I belong to him. And this is who I am in Christ. I am free in Christ. I am powerful in Christ. I am the anointed of God. I am a friend of God. Do you know the Bible tells you that you are a friend of God? He's not just God out there distant and far away from you, but he says that he, you are his friend and that he is your friend. I'm a friend of God. He's on my side. I don't have to fight this alone. I don't have to deal with this alone. I don't have to fall down and lay there because my God is there to meet me when I fall and to help me get back up and to go forward again. But let me tell you this about change. When you have a breakthrough, the change that takes place is that you are breaking through into something new, but you are also breaking away from what was left behind. The process has got both those things taking place in it. And that sometimes is where we fall down, is we don't recognize what we have to break away from in order to break through into in order to get to where we need to go. In very simple terms in the story of David with the Philistines here, in order for the Philistines to be beaten, David had to go out and take the action of taking his men out to war. He couldn't stay in the safety of his, of his town, in the safety of his house. He couldn't leave his soldiers in the safety of their homes. He couldn't leave them in that place. They had to get out and go and do something different. And when they did, there was that risk that was there. But in doing that, they left what was behind to go out and do the battle so that they could remain in safety and victory beyond that. So they had to change from, oh, it's safe and, and warm here. I don't want to go out to, we have to go out and do this. And here's where it plays through in our lives and how it plays through in our lives. Imagine, if you will, just for a moment, that there's a line running straight down the center of the floor here. In fact, pretend this is sand. I'll mark it in the sand, okay? There it is. There's the line down the center of the floor. And over here, this is where we are. Let's try it on this side because that's where God was, right? Over here, we are. Over here, we're struggling on this side. We're saying, I am, I am here on this side of this, and I, I'm struggling 
And I need a breakthrough in my life. I need to break through into what God has for me. I need to break through into where the healing of God in my life. I need to break through to find where he's leading me, what he wants me to do. I need to break through to find that relationship that I really need to have, that I really want to have. I need to break through and find the healing in my family. I need that in my life. And we're over here and we're struggling with this breakthrough, with our addictions, with whatever it is in our lives. We're struggling with it. God comes along and he says, okay, now, through what you've done, through your prayer, your fasting, your repentance, you're pulling closer to me, and he gives the breakthrough, whether it's a balloon burst or whether it's the river washing away and, and changing the course of the river and, and making the breakthrough in that way as a flood, whatever it is, you mow into your place of breakthrough. But the past is still over there. And if you try to bring that with you, all of that with you, you're going to have some problems because you need to know what was over there that was causing your problem. You can't bring with you the problems. You cannot allow yourself to stay in that place of problems because your problems will try to come back at you. Your problems will try to come and, and get you even when you've had the breakthrough because over here in breakthrough, that doesn't mean you're not going to be tempted or be challenged with those problems anymore. You are going to be living and functioning in those challenges all the time because they are going to continue in your life. If you want to see it in Scripture, just look in the next verse. Over in verse, starting in verse 22. David's talking again. So this is right after. This is again in 2 Samuel chapter 5. But now down in verse 22, just two verses after that last great victory where God is the God of breakthrough. Here's what happens. But after a while, the Philistines returned again and spread out across the, the valley of Rephraim. And again, David asked the Lord what to do. Do not attack them straight on, the Lord replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them from near the poplar trees. And when you hear a sound like the marching of feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what the Lord commanded and struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. Those Philistines that David had just proclaimed, God's given me the breakthrough. We have destroyed them. God has, has overcome and there's a breakthrough and I'm over here with God and everything's, yes, this is so good. Well, after a while, those same Philistines tried to attack again. And just because they were attacking, David did not discredit the victory that had been given. I have the victory. I am in the place of victory. I'm in the place of victory with God. My God is the God of breakthrough. He's proven that he's the God of breakthrough. Just because they're coming at me again does not mean that I, have got, that I am in a place where God is not a God of breakthrough. And so he went and he did the same thing again. He inquired of the Lord, what should I do? And when God told him what to do, he did exactly what God told him to do. And this time, when the Philistines were defeated, he chased them. He got out and he literally chased them. And there's a bunch of various ideas as to how far it was, but it's anywhere from five to 10 miles. He chased the army of the Philistines, destroying them along the way as he continued to chase them, to get them away and gone. You're leaving me. You're not coming back at me. But just because they came again to, to confront him, God, David did not say, God has left me. God has forgotten about me. He said, huh, they're trying again. God, they're coming at me again. What do we need to do? And God said, we're going to defeat them. And this time we're going to do a little bit different, but we're going to defeat them. And David said, yeah. Why? Because I am who I am and you, and you are my God. And God, you've proven yourself. You're the God of victory. And I'm not going to lose my breakthrough just because these little guys over here, these little Philistine guys, just because they are trying to come and pull me back and to pull me back into what's there, I am not going to let that happen to me. I'm going to stay in my place of breakthrough before God. And I'm not going, to, not going to leave this place. There's a story I heard of a, of a nurse who had broken her ankle. And she broke it so badly that she had to have surgery on her ankle. And after surgery and everything went well with it and it was, it was healed up fairly good and, and getting stronger... She had to go into physiotherapy to learn how to walk again. And as she walked in, she, she limped in, into the physical therapist. Physical therapist looked at her and said, are you in pain? 
He goes, no, I'm not in pain. He said, well, why, why are you limping? The physical therapist went on to say, you need to understand that, that you have got to use those muscles. You cannot protect that ankle. You've got to use that ankle. The more you try to protect it, the less it's going to be able to function as it should function. You need to, there are muscles that are there that are around that ankle. There are muscles in that leg. There are muscles around in your life that are there to give you in your body to give you what you need to do and how you need to function. And you can't protect that ankle simply because it was hurt. You need to get that ankle strong so that it can't be hurt again. We do the same thing in our lives once we get the breakthrough. We get the breakthrough with God and we still want to guard, guard the hurt, guard where we've been broken, guard, guard where the pain is. And ultimately for us to be able to have a complete and total breakthrough, we need to let that become strong. Where I am weak, he is strong. So let that weakness in us, let him start to heal it. Let him start to heal your emotions. Let God heal your emotions. Help him to let you trust again. Trust again. Trust God. Trust people. Help him to let you believe again. Help him to let you know that you can function again. Don't go back into that. Don't go stepping back into this place and try to bring any of this stuff with you. You don't want to bring any of this thing, stuff with you. You don't want any of this stuff that's over here that was keeping you here with you. You bring the good things, you leave the bad things. But you need to know which is which. And you need to leave the bad over here on this side of your breakthrough because you're breaking through into something and you're breaking away from that stuff that was holding you back over there. And you have to make that distinction. We have to know what that is. And God will show us and teach us so that we can be pulled closer and closer and closer to him. That's his desire for your life and for mine, to move in that direction to him continually. And when we are close to him, when we're functioning in that place of closeness with God, this is where he can start to really work and show us more things. Because once we have one breakthrough, <laughs> breakthrough leads to breakthrough. I hope you understand that. You get a breakthrough in one area of your life. You're learning new things. You're experiencing new things. God will show you another breakthrough, then another breakthrough, then another breakthrough. You start to learn more about yourself and God. And when one relationship heals, you see how another relationship can be healed. When there is one addiction that's broken, you can see how other things are controlling your life that you need to let go of. And God can move and work in those things. This is how God works in us. He pulls us over here. He shows us his victory and his power. And then he lets that power start to spread into other areas of our lives to give us the things that we need to do. But we need to know where we are and where we're tracking and what we're experiencing and where we are falling down, where we are falling short. Because the traps out there are very real for us. The traps out there can hinder us, can hold us back, can cause us to sink deep into problems and habits and reactions that keep us from him. There's a woman by the name of Portia Nelson. Some of you may have heard of her. She was an American actress born in 1920 and she passed away in 2001. She's not known for any of her great acting abilities. In fact, the only thing that she is known for is her autobiography. And it's been repeated and reprinted and talked about for many years now. She tells her autobiography in five short chapters. And I'm going to read you the entire five chapters right now. But I want you to listen and I want you to see where you see yourself along this way when you're dealing with the things you need to break through in your life, where are you in the process of this breakthrough for you? Listen to what Portia says. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It's not my fault. It takes me forever to find a way out. Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault, and it still takes me a long time to get out. 
chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see that it's there. I still fall in. It's, it's become a habit to me. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It's my fault. And I can get out. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. I see the hole in the sidewalk. I step around it. Chapter 5. I walk down a different street. You see, in those five short chapters of her life, she explains how habits were born and trapped her. She explains how those habits got a hold of her in her life and kept her where she was. She explained how even though she got out of it, she kept coming back to it. She kept doing what we were talking about and trying to pull some of those things that were bad over into the place of breakthrough that we've got. And then we wind up falling back in the same hole again because we haven't completely let go of those things that we need to let go of so much. And it wasn't until she got to the last two chapters where real change started to happen. But in chapter four, she still walked down the same street. It wasn't until chapter five that she chose to walk a different way. When we're talking about our walk with Christ, we're talking about leaving behind us the things of the past, putting off, the Bible says, put off the old person, the old man, the old being. Put that off and put on the new being that we are in Christ Jesus. And to live and function as this new being. In Romans chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter 4 both tell us that we need to change how we think about things and, and our minds need to be shaped in a way that God's that God's ways are, are in us and through us and functioning in our lives, that we understand God's purposes and plans. And it's all about that changes, those changes that take place in us that bring us closer to God and bring us to this place where now God is able to really work in us. But we have to get rid of all of those old things and we have to push them aside. And ultimately, we have to make sure that we don't even walk down the same street that caused us to fall in the hole in the first place. We're now functioning and living with God, what he has for us. I just want to tell you right now that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, God loves you. He loves you. He is with you right this moment. And if you're struggling with a breakthrough in your life, whether it be emotional, physical, spiritual, relational, wherever that struggle is in your life, God has got the breakthrough for you and he is already working on it even though you don't see it. But the key for you today, the key for you right now is to be able to seek him, to obey him, believe what he says and to do what he's telling you to do so that he can start to move you to the place where he can work in you. God loves you. Let me pray with you this morning. God, I thank you that you are here with us, no matter where we are, whether it's here in this garage or whether it's in the dozens of living rooms that are this message is being heard, wherever it may be. Father, you are with us. You are a God who loves us. You are a God who cares about us. You are a God who wants each one of us to break through those things that have been holding us back in our lives. And Father, now I speak that blessing of breakthrough upon each home, upon each family, upon each person. That Lord, old habits, old thought patterns, self-condemnation, fear, anger, regret, Bad habits, addictions in the name of Jesus will be broken and gone and that we may be able to live in the fullness of the new life that you have for us. That God, we can embrace, the, every, we can embrace everything that you've got and live and function as you desire for us to be. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord. And may your truth and your love and your grace guide and function and be with us and bless us in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you thank you so much amen 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 if you look at the bottom of your computer screen there there's a, a
a little button there that says pray or ask for prayer. You push that button. We have prayer team members that are waiting to talk with you this morning. They'll chat with you. and They'll pray with you. They will be with you. They'll encourage you. And they want to do that. They're, they're chomping at the bit, ready to help you in any way that they can to just love on you with God's grace and God's goodness. Don't be, don't be afraid to reach out and let them reach to you. Take that step today. Take that action and let that prayer come to you. One more thing before we go, I just want you to know that there are so many people around us in our church family that are alone uh, and are feeling lonely, are feeling confined where we're at. I encourage you just to reach out and touch them through phone calls, through Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever you can do to, to contact people and to pray with them. Uh, there's a group that meets for prayer on Zoom once a week. There's other life groups that are coming together on Zoom and on Facebook and, and Skype. You need, if you want to be a part of that, contact the church office. We can make you a part of any of those things. And you, you're welcome to join us. Because God is working in your life and in our church. Even though we can't come together like we you normally can in the way we used to, God is working. He's with you and he wants to love you right now. So reach out and do that. One last thing. We know that our churches are blessed in so many ways that we've got so many good things going on in our lives. And in, even though this coronavirus is going on, there's so many things that God is continuing to do for us and in us. But the church also needs to continue to function financially. So we invite you this morning to remember your tithes and your offerings. Our church is not only meeting our, me, our needs as a administratively within the church, but also we're pouring into our community and to the families and people who are not able to meet their needs the way that they normally would right now. So I invite you to give and to give generously to the work of, we're, of our church and the work of the Lord that we are doing. We are being very financially responsible in what we're doing. And God is going to bless you as you bless the church and in what you are doing. So do that today. Reach out, write your check. You're going to see some information on your screen before too long here about how you can give. You can give right there from home without ever leaving your computer or ever leaving your house. So do that. Get your tithes and author, offerings in and be a part of how we are blessing others for Jesus Christ. So I, I speak a blessing over you today that the goodness of, great, of God will be upon you, that he is the way maker the promise keeper. He is the one who's going to work in your life. He's the way, he's going to give you truth and power and strength and victory in your life because we are the God, we serve the God who is the God of breakthrough. We serve the God who is breaking through for you now in the name of Jesus. Have a great week. God bless you.